Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Jessica Devereaux in Baltimore. 2014 has been quite the year for climate issues. If you remember, the UN Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change reported that emissions of greenhouse gases are the highest in history, and that could lead to, quote, serious and pervasive effects to our environment. With us to discuss the top three climate red flags that people should be aware of is our guest, Dar Jamal. Dar is a staff writer, reporter for Truth Out, and he currently focuses on the environment and climate change. He joins us now from Washington State. Thanks so much for joining us, Dar. Good to be here. So, Dar, here on The Real News, we're not going to do a countdown. We're just going to get right to it and talk about the number one story, in your opinion, for 2014. And that has to be the hottest year in recorded history. That's 2014. That's according to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. So, Dar, what's the significance of that? Well, it is significant because it shows that we are clearly on a, a very, very steep trend as far as every year getting hotter. I mean, 2014 being the hottest year ever recorded, that's according to NOAA and several other major agencies. And also considering the fact that 10, uh, the 10 hottest years ever recorded have all occurred in the last 16 years. And so when we look into the future projections, this doesn't bode well because clearly we're on a, a, a very dramatically upwardly escalating trend, but also because even the worst case IPCC uh, future temperature projections show that by 2100, worst case is around five degrees C, uh, which of course is, is astronomically high considering that humans have never even lived on a planet at 3.5 C above baseline temperatures are higher. But that's even now being, the IPCC prediction is now even being eclipsed by a recent Smithsonian Institute documentary that predicted between a 9 and 11 uh, Fahrenheit increase by 2100, which is even significantly more than the IPCC worst case. And so what are we talking about here when we're talking about temperatures? Are we talking about just oceans, um, land? What are we talking about? Well, everything, because right now the, the temperatures on land haven't, haven't increased as much. I mean, already, uh, clearly, they've increased uh, dramatically, but the, they've been somewhat tempered because oceans have absorbed about 90% of the CO2 and a lot of the temperature. And that's going to start, uh, the, basically, the land's going to start uh, picking up more of the slack, for, for, lack, for, for a very general way to put it, uh, as we move into the future. So we're going to see a lot more dramatic increase uh, both on land and the oceans, rather than um, the majority of it being in the oceans so far. Okay, let's continue and talk about the oceans, because we're seeing melting polar ice caps and the rise in sea levels. So that brings us to our number two story, polar ice caps melting. Can we talk about some specifics here? Where are we seeing this happen, and what kind of effect is it having on human and animal populations? Well, 90% of the global human population lives in relatively close proximity to the coast. So this is going to impact, have direct impact on the vast majority of the people on the planet. And the most obvious places to look are you know, what people would think of first, places like this, the entire state of Florida. But then we can move into the major cities right on the coast, places like uh, Miami. We can look overseas, you know, the entire delta, you know, Bangladesh. We can look at you know, uh, largely coastal countries like Japan and, and Southeastern Asia, um, other coastal cities up like where I am, Seattle, by way of example, go down the West Coast, you know, LA, San Francisco, huge population centers right on the coast. And this is a, a, a very important aspect of the story because the worst case IPCC prediction is one meter sea level rise by 2100. And yet, yet the chief scientist of NASA at a recent lecture at University College of London said that that IPCC worst case prediction doesn't even take into account the Western Antarctic ice sheet, which is now melting far faster than anyone suspected it would. And that would add yet another one meter C uh, on a, in addition to the IPCC 1C prediction. So already we've, we've just literally seen in the last few weeks because of that, that addition by NASA's chief scientist literally a doubling of the worst case prediction. So we're looking at um, worst, case in ex uh, worst case scenario of, of two degrees C by 2100 of, of sea level rise across the globe. All right, last but not least, Dar, of course we have to talk about the rise in natural disasters, specifically extreme drought as well as extreme weather events happening all over the world. I mean, in the past, climate scientists have really been sort of hesitant, Dar, to make this connection with weather and climate change. What's actually changed in the science? 
Well, science has, has basically been able to catch up, uh, get a lot closer with real-time events. And so the direct correlation between an extreme weather events, whether it be storms or droughts, et cetera, uh, to directly to climate change, that they've just become a lot more adept at it. And so it, it, it's clear that, for example, if we talk about s some um, evidence of this closer to home, the California drought, NASA, for example, just released a study that even despite the recent rains in, in the state, that the groundwater reserves are still depleted uh, to the point where they would require 11 trillion gallons of water to be uh, get them back up to normal levels. And if we look at extreme weather events, uh, while there, you know, we, we can look at droughts. There's been several other cases across the U.S. Uh, record-setting temperatures of, of hot and cold, both. Uh, we didn't see really any big hurricanes hit the U.S. this season. But if we look overseas at Asia, the Philippines, Japan, other areas of Asia have been hit by some of the uh, biggest uh, record-breaking storms in history, with a lot of casualties. And and so these are ongoing and, and clearly continuing to increase across the world. Uh, in addition to places like Kiribati, one of the South Pacific islands, that it came out this year that their government announced that, hey, we're not going to exist uh, before long. And, and uh, they're starting to look at where to move their people to. And literally an entire country is going to not exist uh, within the next couple of decades. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Dar Jamal, thank you so very much for giving us an update on what stories that we should be thinking about that happened this year, but also things to be keeping track of in the year to come. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.